Okay, how excited are you if you're a Browns fan? Like, I, I don't know. I, I feel like you have to be excited. And we are going to talk about that. And Miles Garrett is excited as well. You're going to love what he just had to say about this defensive line and some of the new players that are coming in and how he envisions himself next to it. Uh, we're going to talk about that along with the depth on this defense as well. There has to be excitement in Cleveland. I know it's a loaded AFC, but this is a very complete roster for the most part, uh, as far as I can tell. And as far as what I've seen and what I'm seeing watching film, even from last year. But before that, let me just say, um, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, hit it up. We like to do small market teams here. We like to give love to the little guy. You're not going to see us talking about those teams that are always on ESPN we are going to be talking about the smaller market teams that aren't getting as much love. Cleveland being one of them. It's close to us. We have another show. It's called Sports Talk Detroit. You can always feel free to check that out too. But if you love the Browns and the other small market teams or just love NFL, keep paying attention. So Miles Garrett, um, without further ado, starts saying that he sees vast potential for this D-line. And in this video, we're going to talk exactly about why he should absolutely see potential in this defensive line. Um, first, it started with Kevin Stefanski, the coach. He said, Coach Schwartz and our defensive line, you're always looking for matchups and to have versatility among that front. They do. He said, really, all our DNs can rush inside, and that allows you game by game to move the pieces around as you see fit. We're going to talk later in this video about why they have the ability to move in different places. Um, as far as what Miles Garrett said, this is what you're going to love. As far as, and then when he asked about the potential from the rebuilt defensive line, and he said, the potential is as far as we want to take it. The guys we have are very talented in many ways, and there's a lot of different skill sets that we have on the D-line, which you have a lot of guys who have just been waiting for, on this opportunity that we have, this freedom that we have been given. I know Schwartz likes to say, take off the seatbelt. So I think it's really the mindset, and then you get out there and you're just letting loose. You want to know what a scary thought is for opposing quarterbacks? Miles Garrett letting loose. Zadarius Smith letting loose Delvin Tomlinson letting loose. There are players on players, but here's what you have to understand, especially with this new kind of pairing Zadarius Smith and miles Garrett Zadarius Smith's getting a little older in the tooth. Don't get me wrong. He's 30 years old. It's not, it's not like it's a death sentence. Don't worry about it, but he had some productive years for the Ravens. The Packers handed him a pretty good size contract and he played with Green Bay for three years. Those three years in Green Bay, he was really good for the first two. Then he only he got hurt and he didn't get to play in that third year. But those first two years with Green Bay, he had 13 and a half and 12 and a half sacks. Then he gets hurt and he goes to the Vikings and you're wondering like, Man, Green Bay kind of let him go. He went in the division. Like, maybe he just doesn't have it anymore. Nope. Ten more sacks. Like, you are getting a good, good player here. Then here's the other thing I want you to understand. One thing that's so good about Miles Garrett is that he can do multiple things, right? Like, we know he's an elite pass rusher, but he has a body that allows him to do multiple things. He's 6'4", 272. Zadarius Smith, guess how tall he is, 6'4". Guess how much he weighs? 272. He is the exact same size. He doesn't have quite the same burst. I understand that. He was a fourth round selection. Miles Garrett was number one, number one. All right. So we know he's good, but you can like PFF. If you want, you can hate it, but now you have a front line and I want to show you this. Obviously it starts with Miles Garrett, who has an overall PFF grade of 92.5. Like that's about as good as it gets. He is, and I think you all know this, one of the, if not the best DNs in the game. He is unbelievable. What did he have? 18 sacks last year, something like that. 93.5 pass rush. Um, the only thing that brings that down is he doesn't have a good run defense grade. Now you bring in Zadarius Smith. Last year, Dude had an 84.7 pass rush grade and an 82.2 overall grade. He's a guy who can slide into the middle. In fact, uh, reports coming out of OTAs, mini camp, whatever you want to call it, 
um, are that he was sliding inside quite a bit in what a lot of teams would call a NASCAR package, but where you have four guys that can rush the passer. But with his size and his length and his speed and his power, he can move to the inside on pass rushing situations, and dude can absolutely create havoc from the inside. He wins matchups with tackles all the time. Imagine what he's going to do if he gets one-on-one with a guard. All right. And then you have Delvin Tomlinson on the other inside position. Dude's 325. He's your anchor. He's the guy you have to double team. He's a 77 overall. All right. And an 80 pass rush. Everybody can rush the passer. Everybody. Ogbiani Okoronkwo. I know I, it's so hard for me to say that. This is a guy that's come into his own. All right, 28 years old. All right, last year had five sacks, had a pass rush grade of 82. He's smaller. He's on the 253. He's more of your pure edge rusher. This is a defensive front against the pass that is absolutely terrifying. I want you all to hear me say that. It is terrifying. I have no part in wanting this. And if I am a fan of the Browns, how much fun is it going to be to watch these guys just go off the ball? Now, the semi-weakness of this Browns defense, you could argue, is on the corners. All right, Denzel Ward has played at a high caliber before. I think he can get that back, especially when you have a defensive line like this. Maybe you have Newsom on the other side. Um, I, at least that's probably where I'd go with it. You maybe have um, Emerson as well. I, I mean, like that's, I get it. That's a little bit more of a, a weak spot, but here's the beauty of it. There has been so many teams that have been se- successful with moderate secondaries because they didn't have to blitz. So they could bring in extra DBs or they could bring their linebackers dropped more in coverage to give extra help because they can get home with a pass rush of four people. And when you have Smith, Tomlinson, Garrett, all right, um, Okoronkwo, you're going to get home more often than not just rushing four. So you need to be excited about the potential. And then when you bring in a legitimate play caller in in Jim Schwartz, you can say what you want about Jim Schwartz. He was a good defensive coordinator. He became head coach of the Lions. Um, He wasn't a horrible head coach, to be honest with you. I mean, he had good starts, but the talent just wasn't quite there. This is usually the case in Detroit, unfortunately. All right. And then um, not anymore, not anymore. But this isn't a Lions video. And then he goes and he's the D coordinator in Philly and he has some success and you can say what you want because he's not there anymore, but he is a proven defensive coordinator. And I think he will increase the ceiling of this defense this year. So, so much to be excited about in Cleveland, but that defensive front four is nasty and you guys have to be excited about that. Leave a comment below, hit that subscribe button and uh, Hey, We'll see you on the next video.